they still need that. They still need it. I only have few few guys. It's okay. Anyway, I think I have some a clicker here. So no pre-lunch. Okay, let's talk about uh, creating uh, your own customized metamorphic algorithm. I actually just revised this the, the last part for from I came from Shomicon last just a few days ago. I showed something like similar to this one. Okay, about me, uh, it, some of you knows that if you're reading articles from Virus Bulletin, I published like 22 articles, like uh, in a span of like five years, six years, and I work at Fortinet. Okay, those are some of my my conferences that the conferences that I've been to already, and most of the time I send this picture as my bio picture, but actually. This is like me when, when I do malware research and analysis. Anyway, okay, we're going to talk about Birlac, which is a, a file infecting ransomware. Some of the, the features that we can see, the reversing stages, and then we'll try to make how to make our own customized version of its metamorphic engine. Okay, Birlac is, uh, let's talk about pilot, pilot vector. When we talk about pilot infector, it is actually, it attaches the, the malware code to a file, to a host file. Like, for example, it wants to infect calculator, it will be infected. Then when you run calculator, it will again look for another host to infect. Okay, most of the time, it is one of the malware that is hard to restore because if your calculator is infected, it's okay, just delete the calculator and restore the the Windows system, but if you are developing some executable, some applications, it is it is infected, then it is very hard to to clean. Sometimes it might corrupt your 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 apps. And ransomware, as we already know, but this one is not about WannaCry. Okay, I don't have time to to do that for a presentation. But when we talk about ransomware, sometimes most of the time it encrypts your files, and then. Of course, if you want to pay, you have to pay with Bitcoin and use store and everything. So that, that's the reason why ransomware is in a boom industry now because uh, the criminals can get away with it because of the Tor and Bitcoin, Bitcoin payment. Okay, Birlac is a combination of a ransomware and a file inspector. That is sometimes, that is why it is somehow a bit complicated to analyze, okay? If you, if you, if you are infected with a ransomware and then you were able to clean it, okay, you're, you're, you're fine. But if it is infected, okay, you, you somehow give your, or you somehow back up your infected copy, you thought that it's already fine. When you run again your applications, you will get infected again. Okay, that's one of the stronghold of the beer lock for the file infector. As a ransomware, some of the visible symptoms. The good thing with the with a ransomware is you you will know you will know if you are infected or not. Unlike a regular file inspector, unlike uh, unlike other trojans, worms, you'll never know. But for ransomware, you will always have a visible symptoms like that. If you are going to do some presentation, if you, and if you're infected with ransomware, and then your presentation is already done. Okay. Good thing is just part of the slides. Okay, if you're infected with Birlac, okay, it knows where you are. It knows your location. I live in Vancouver, so it knows that I I live in Canada. If you click that, if you run your if you run Birlac in US, it will change this flag and then it will change this amount here, two fifty USD. Okay, not 250 CAD is Canadian. And of course, the good thing, another good thing, okay, I'm not saying that ransomware is good. Another good thing with ransomware is if you don't know, if you're infected and you have nothing to do or you don't know about anything about Bitcoin, okay, it will teach you what is Bitcoin. It will explain everything. 
okay, it will explain what is Bitcoin. And then if your, for example, your grandmother was infected, and then what, he will be, she will panic and everything, but, okay, at least she will know what is Bitcoin. You don't need to explain it to her. And the thing is, you already know the Bitcoin, but where can we get the Bitcoin? Can we go to the bank? Can we go somewhere else? Beer Luck will show you locations wherein you can actually get the Bitcoins. In US and Canada, there actually, you can actually go to a place wherein you can see an, something like that looks like an ATM machine. Okay, wherein you can actually exchange your cash to a Bitcoin number. It will just give you a printout and with the Bitcoin. Actually went to Seattle, Seattle one time, Seattle to Lily. Okay, wherein there is a machine there. I'm supposed to get a video, change my money to Bitcoin. The problem is, okay, because that machine is a legal entity, okay, they, they need my license number to, to purchase a Bitcoin. So I did not do that. So no demo for the, for the Bitcoin. And then, because it, it doesn't actually know where you are exactly in Canada, or probably if you're infected in US, it will give you some locations that you are probably, for example, if you are in Vancouver, there are three locations that you can get your, your money. It is very helpful. The problem with your luck is you, if you're infected, you cannot really go somewhere else in your, inside your computer. Okay. It is luck. It is lacking. It is one of the category of ransomware that locks your, your computer screen too, unless you, you pay. Okay. If you're rich and have an extra money to pay, okay, you can go look for the particular amount for the Bitcoin itself. Anyway, that's, that, there is the visible symptoms for Birlang. As a common malware, normally when we analyze a malware, not only ransomware, we use some tools, the debugger, this is your, if you want to go deeper in the, in the code, okay. So I normally use immunity debugger. I prob usually prepare this because I, I, you can use Python script to automate your, your debugging. But if you're, if you encounter 60 bit, 64 bit malware, okay, you can use x64 dbg. Another good thing with 64 dbg is it is always being enhanced. They always have updates and everything. Okay. Okay. For common reversing, normally if you have encountered a pack or encrypted malware or infected file, okay, usually you try to unpack the malware and then you can see this. Then you can use the decrypted or unpacked version to, to do static or dynamic analysis. You can use IDA or you can use, you can dump it to some as, disassembler and so on. Okay. But this malware, is actually has different stages. The first one, when you get an infected file, okay, you only have two, this is your MZ header, and you only have two sections, the dot text and the dot RSRC, the resource, okay. Afterwards, we, from that, that text, actually somewhere down here is your metamorphic algorithm. This is the metamorphic code, okay. When you run the metamorphic code, it will actually decode a few bytes at the top of the file, okay, before, of course, the, after the header, okay, and then that decoded bytes are responsible for, for creating the, the main function. Wherein the main function is the one that is responsible for the on-demand polymorphic. So, Birlac has metamorphic, it also has metamorphic. The, the problem with this one, I call it the on-demand polymorphic because, okay, when you, when you try to run as a one function, okay, it will try to decrypt that function, execute the function, and encrypt it back. But the problem is when you, when it encrypts it back, it uses a different key. Okay, that's why I call it on demand. Okay, and unlike, unlike other malware, when you try to unpack it in memory, you can just grab it and dump it. But this one, it, you can only see at any given time, you can only see a decrypted one function, one sub-function. That means every time you execute a function, as a, for example, there's a function that drops a file, okay? And then when it, it encrypts it back, it is now different. So that means from the original code earlier, it goes to the memory, it executed several functions already, it will look like Christmas light, uh, Christmas lies inside your memory because it's different. If you run it again, for example, you try to run it again, 
as uh, in a different system, it will give you a different set of binaries. That is why, that's why I call it on-demand polymorphic. And at the end, you can actually see the host file somewhere here. Okay. The good thing with that is the host file, when it is, it is only encrypted using an XOR, you can easily clean your file, okay, by using just a regular XOR decryption. Let's look at now as the build up as a file inspector. Okay, as I've said earlier, it is encrypted, but all you have to do is to locate the proper location of that malware and then use, look for the decryption key and use a simple XOR, something like this. Okay, initially you will see encrypted version. Okay, running this code, it will actually generate, okay, look for the decryption key, run that one, you can actually create a Python script in order for it to, to decrypt. Okay, when it is decrypted, okay, from the same memory location, it is actually gonna give you the name of the original file, the executable, and this is now your, okay, if you're familiar with the, the executable structure, this is now your decrypted version. Okay, look at this, same location, but this one is the decrypted, and the other one is the encrypted host file. All you have to do if you want to, if you are in charge of the cleaning part, create a Python script, look for the keys, decrypt, and then that's it. That is for the file impact. For polymorphic malware, as a polymorphic malware for Birlock, okay, we're going to, it usually create, uses a decryptor with that old key. It uses some garbage code, redundancy, it uses XOR to generate the key. Okay, these are the garbage code, wherein when we, when, when we talk of garbage code, that means they are irrelevant to the code. Okay, you have to do, that means it is used for like, for, for the analyst, for them to, to take longer for analysis. Then while the anal, while, while the researcher is looking into the code, the malware is actually going around globally, and then probably once the researcher is done analyzing the malware. The malware is also done infecting the whole world. Okay, so that is the purpose of usually the garbage code. Okay, just to slow down the research. And then this one generates the key. It decrypts the the function, and then it executes the function. This is the actual XOR decryptor, and then afterwards it runs the execution. So it executes the newly decrypted code. And then it uses the RDTSC function, it gets the timestamp, okay, on that particular one for it to generate a new key. To generate the new key, all you have to do is to use the RDTST, save it somewhere, and then use the key bytes, and now it XOR box. It uses the same, actually the same code. Okay, this one. This is the same actually code in order for it to generate, regenerate a new key every time. That is now where the new key is. Or if you're going to look at the decryptor, this is the decryptor. This is the key, actually. And then after getting that, it will show you that everything is the same except for the, this one is the old and the new key. So that is how it generates the new one. And then it uses the same encryptor, decryptor, wherein it uses all that particular, it goes back. It use, because it's only an XOR, if you XOR something with the same thing, it gives you the same value, the original value. And then it gets another. For example, this is the, the code encrypted with an old key. Okay, I just grabbed the 16 bytes. After decrypting, it will look like this. This is the decrypted code. This is actually now the executable portion of the, the malware. And then after executing that one, it will generate the key. Okay. It is now encrypting it with the new key. Look at this. They are all in similar location. If you go to your memory, if you try to access your memory process, it will only, you will only see this particular one as decrypted. Other, other else are also encrypted. So you cannot dump totally the whole thing. If you want to, to dump the, the malware, you have to dump it, follow the code, follow the decryption. If it is encrypted, decrypted already, dump it, that particular portion, 
run, try to decrypt the other part, and then you probably can be able to to get the whole the whole malware process. For detection, if you want, if you are in charge of trying, if you want to try to detect the malware, okay, do not get the this particular part because this one is encrypted with old key. This one is encrypted with the new key. They always change, but this one doesn't change. They always have the same dec decrypted version. Okay, so if you want to make detection for for that particular malware, for the part of the code, okay, sometimes this one is also changing. Okay, all you have to do is to detect the one wherein it looks to generate the 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 new key. That is for the detection. Let's go now to the main part, metamorphic algorithm. When we talk about metamorphic algorithm, what is the difference between metamorphic and polymorphic? Polymorphic is it changes the code at the same time it is encrypted. Okay, that is polymorphic. For metamorphic, it changes the code, but the code itself is not encrypted. You can actually totally see, you can actually read, or you can use IDA or disassembler in order to see the code. But the thing is, you can, there are many ways to generate instructions that is actually doing the same thing. Like, for example, this one. If we are trying to find, uh, to put a value zero to a register EAX, you can use mob EAX zero. You can use XOR. It generates also a value zero for EAX. Or you can, of course, subtract the same value to that particular register. It also generates zero. Or you can combine different instructions but at the end, it will generate a zero for the EAX. That is what we call metamorphic. Different group of instructions, but it produces the same result. Okay, but encrypted, you cannot actually run the encrypted bytes, the polymorphic, right? Because it is encrypted. But for metamorphic, you can run the actual code, but they are different, compares to different samples. That is metamorphic. Most of the time, it is hard to find similar bytes if you're looking at the detection. For beard lock, it uses different length of bytes just to generate the four bytes, different four bytes, okay? Let's look at the metamorphic engine for beard lock. It uses different number of instructions. Registers use per instruction. It changes EAX, EBX, and so on and so forth. And then it, it has its own instruction generator, generator two, then length of code to encode. If you're going to look at, this one is uh, in IDA. Okay, this particular part is the pseudo value generator. Okay, it generates a certain amount of uh, different value in order to produce, to select which registers are you going to use. Okay, ESI contains the buffer of the actual, mal of the actual where you are going to put the decrypted version, uh, the encrypted version. And then this is the EDI contains the malware buffer. This one generates which register is to be used for the address, which registers to be used for the code. Okay, so this particular part of, of code will generate those different information that the malware needs. So different ingredients for to create the metamorphic in, engine. Okay, this one is the instructor instruction generator one, wherein it depends on the combination of EAX, EDI, EBX, Okay, it will generate the mob instruction. The mob instruction for the code register, ad address register. Okay, sometimes if, if it is EAX is zero, EDA, EDA two is, EDI is two, EBX is one, or negative one, compared to this, it now generates instead of mob, just regular mob, it generates the sub, and so on and so forth. Okay, it depends on the different combinations of, of the registers. Okay. So sub or add and everything, okay? And this, this one is different groups of combinations of those registers. And within the Beardlock malware, it has a table wherein it generates, it decides, this is where it decides. So it creates a pseudo random value and then checks the table and then it decides, am I going to use an add instruction, a sub instruction, or just a regular mob instruction? And then the last, the second random generator is the one that creates the instruction wherein it puts the, the generated value to a certain register. I have here a demo, not live demo, just a video demo for, okay, just to make sure that everything is going to work. 
this is how it generates the the metamorphic algorithm. So it gets the the timestamp. Okay. Creates a pseudo random value from the timestamp. It is now going to generate a certain instruction from the generated pseudo random value. So looking at this, it is actually going to generate an instruction just to encrypt four bytes, a D word. Calling the instruction one function. See, you can see it generates either, it depends on the, the part wherein it generates the mob, the sub, and then it will encrypt this malware code, just the four bytes. Okay, this, that, that is how it generates the metamorphic algorithm now. So, with this code, okay, if you run this, it will decrypt the four bytes here. And then, another group of instructions will generate or will, dec will encrypt another set of four bytes. It will continue to do that. That is what we call the metamorphic algorithm. Look at this particular part. Okay, earlier, it only generates five instructions, but this one, it generates a few more, more than 10 instructions, just to to encrypt that particular four bytes. So it depends. So it's th that's the reason why it is sometimes hard to detect. But you cannot you cannot just look for the number of instructions to to generate the four instructions for to, to encrypt the four instructions. That means okay, you cannot really follow this particular part in order for you to to detect the malware. Okay, it will go, it will go on to, uh, it will make these instructions as long as there's still bytes and codes to be, to be encrypt, to encrypt on this particular part. It will encrypt that particular metamorphic algorithm block of code. And afterwards, after generating the metamorphic algorithm, Okay, so this one, it generates, the, the code, in the demo that you've seen earlier is, it just generates this. Okay, this particular part. Okay, most of the time, okay, if you're going to look at the code, it is less, it is approximately 28 kilobytes. It generates the 28 kilobytes, but it only used to, to do the, the deeper, the small code. It only encrypts that small particular code. If you're going to, I compare some, uh, two samples, sample one, sample two, they are, they are actually the same encrypted file, okay? But looking at this, sample one, the first D word to decrypt, it decrypts this to this. This instruction set, it decrypts the first, the second four bytes. This instructions, it decrypts the third four bytes, and then so on and so forth. I didn't do everything else, okay? Comparing that to sample two, earlier, the first four bytes is actually, okay, as long as this, the whole block, the whole square, okay? And it, de it decrypts the same thing. And this one is smaller compared to the first sample, decrypts the second word, and this is now your third word, okay? So comparing again, sample one, this is sample two. This is the first four bytes. This is the second four bytes. Remember that sample one and sample two, they are differently encrypted, but they are the same sample. This is now the third byte for sample one, sample two. Even the registers here are different. If you want to make a detection for this, do not make detections for, for those metamorphic algorithm, okay? You have to make detection on this particular part. I have this another demo, oh, another demo, wherein it actually shows you how the metamorphic code works. Okay. For some malware that has metamorphic algorithm, most of the time you try to to look into the code, but it actually slows you down. But there is actually a trick wherein you can totally jump out of metamorphic algorithm. Not just for beer luck. You can, if you encounter a malware 
which is using a metamorphic algorithm, all you have to do is to, because you will, you will, you will feel it if you're, if you're, if you're analyzing, you will know that there's something going on, that you are actually analyzing a metamorphic malware. Okay? All you have to do is to, to go actually at the very end. You try to find the jump or the call outside the metamorphic code. Okay? At the very end, it, see, it's just decrypting. It will go on forever to decrypt your malware. Okay? It's only part of the, the malware. But at the end of every metamorphic algorithm, there is a jump or a call. All you have to do is to put a breakpoint at that particular jump or call. Even for UPX, for example, it try, if you try to unpack UPX or FSG or whatever, and a packer that uh, that packs the files, all you have to do is to look for that particular jump or call. It will exit, but once it jumps out, you have now a totally decrypted part of that particular code. Okay, So somewhere there, it will end up to the EAX. There is actually a certain a certain call. See? If you can find the jump or the call after that very long, most of the time you cannot spot it at the very first look because it has a very long set of instructions. All you have to do is to browse from your debugger, look for this. But be careful because sometimes malware, uh, malware author knows that you're also doing that. They might put, they might insert so many calls and jumps, right? So the trick is just put breakpoints on everything and then and then close your eyes and then execute, right? And then that's it. Once you once it jumps out, okay, that's it. You 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 now have your your fully decrypted. That that's only for the metamorphic. Fully decrypted metamorphic or opcode. See, it's now the same, same location. Okay. Sometimes when I analyze a malware, I just close my eyes, hoping for the best. Press. If you're using Oli or Immunity Debugger, press F9. That's it. You're done. Customization. What if the the metamorphic for Birlock is it only uses those add those mob those sub instructions to create the. Let's now make it even harder for malware researchers. I think I'm in the. I'm not supposed to teach you how to do this, but let's try to do this. Okay, for example, for the white, ins for the white instructions, white colored instructions, they are the regular instructions. They are regular instructions for Birlock. Okay, this particular white instructions here, the mob, the sub, okay, this is responsible for, for decrypting the four bytes. Okay, first four bytes. So what are we, go what we're going to do is to make this even harder to detect. Okay, we are going to include instructions that is actually not doing anything, like garbage code. We call it the garbage collection. Garbage code, it looks like a regular instructions, but it doesn't do anything. If you push EAX, you pop EAX, nothing's happening. Nothing's changing, right? If you add EAX to with 1,000, whatever is the value of EAX, adding it with 1,000, and then subtract the same value, it won't touch EAX, right? That is what we call garbage collection. Even though they are executable, but it is irrelevant to the actual code. Okay, that is, so it, we just made that particular part longer and it will take it, it will slow down again the researcher, which is me. Supposed to be, supposed to be me. I'm not, don't, don't listen to what I say just for the sake of the presentation. I'm not teaching you how to make a malware stronger. Okay, again, collecting that this particular part, this is similar to the first, the white instructions here, okay, the same set of instructions, okay, but if you jump, if you put spaghetti code jumping all over the code, you can rearrange, okay, so the instruction here is, the first instruction is mob ESI 6D442, where is it? It's here, mob EDX142A, it is somewhere here, okay. But if you're going to put a jump somewhere, like spaghetti code, okay, going back and forth, you can actually rearrange these instructions, but it will still generate the same code. It will still generate 
the same four decrypted bytes. That is what we call spaghetti code. Right? Another one, NOP. Do you know NOP? Nothing to do. It doesn't do anything. But, okay, you can now skip the, for example, you're detecting this, and then you're supposed to look for the same set of instruction here. But if you put NOP with different numbers, for example, your first in infection is 1,000 NOPs, another is 10, 10 NOPs. So it's hard for us to actually monitor what's happening on the actual code, right? Nothing to do, NOPs, okay? Another irrelevant loop instructions. If you put loop instructions in between those codes like this, it's nothing, hap nothing is happening, but you make your code longer. You make that code longer, but still it doesn't touch what the actual code is doing. Dummy loops. Okay. This particular code decrypts this, okay, using Verilux metamorphic engine. Right? What if we now add the NOPs, the garbage code, the garbage code, the dummy loops, and so on and so forth? This is now what your malware looks like for the first four bytes. Okay. Or you can change it, you can make, make it separately or differently every time, okay. It's now hard to detect. But of course, metamorphic engine, okay, if you have a metamorphic algorithm, the malware researcher, what he needs to do is he just go for the jump or the call. But look at, looking at this, just what I'm saying earlier that be careful with the jump or the call because it can be just a dummy loop, right? So that is now the, your new metamorphic engine. We just enhance their lap. Okay. I think we should not do recording for this. I'm just kidding. Okay. That is now the end of your, of our presentation. Another set of, okay, for, for conclusion, okay, we just did the metamorphic engine. Okay. For reversing, usually you have to do is set a big point at the end of the metamorphic algorithm. Try to copy as much as decrypted code as you want from the memory. Of course, you have to get patterns from the decrypted code for detection. And for, for cleaning, okay, all you have to do is to extract the host file. Sometimes it will lock also some registry keys. And of course, you have to delete all malicious drop files. Okay. And that's, that's it. Any question? So many audiences, too noisy. Cannot, cannot choose. Question? No? I think that's it. Thank you for coming.